Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday, until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. This is Ham Nation, episode 196 for May 13th, 2015. A sneak peek at Dayton. Hello, everybody. We're live from Dayton, Ohio. This is K9EID, and to my left is Valerie. Hi. And VNNL. Hello, everybody. And our newest member, Christian, K0STH. Should we... St- address the folks here you said we're live and it's quiet as anything right yeah, now well, so maybe just to prove it for yeah, a second right we're going to do this on the count of three i want everybody to give their call like you're in the biggest pile up in the world okay <laughs> and and here's what happens when we get if you haven't worked the d expedition or you haven't worked the contest and you tune into these guys here's what they hear one two three <laughs> Kilo Zero uh, again. Did you pick out any calls? Just the Delta X-ray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happens. There's a lot of people here, and uh, we're, we're so happy to be here. And we have to thank ICOM, and we have to thank DX Engineering, because they set all this up. And we're in the, uh, the suites of the Crown Plaza downtown where they're holding Contest University. And and I always thought they named that wrong because people go, oh, I am not a contester. I better not go. Uh-uh. It's classes. It teaches us not only how to operate, but it teaches us all kinds of things like ground loops and audio this and that and how to hook this to that and so on. It's a marvelous two days. And a lot of people, I know one of them I'm seeing right to my right, that come here just for this particular contest university um our good friend jim scheinler w5j's yes and 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 there's a bunch of people here and i really i want to i want to invite all of you when you come to dayton next year you want to spend the first couple of days downtown because it's really great and how how do you find the contest university oh i i get something every year i come and a lot of people that i hang with that have been contesting for years and you know, like Jerry, who's got an, a wall full of awards, or Craig, you know, NCT, they come every year and they always get information from Contest yeah. University. So it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or you've been contesting for a long time. Yeah, there's great. information to be uh, learned yeah. here at Contest University. That's great. Well, we also, we, we want to acknowledge the, uh, the rest of the Ham Nation host because George is here tonight. George, you have your soldering iron all ready to go? Uh, Bob, it's packed up right now. I'm bringing it with me to Dayton. <laughs> you got it ready. Okay. Well, we're going to be uh, happy to see you, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to bring your sidekick with you. And then Don. Don, we're sorry you're not going to be here, but you're home working. You're making a living while we're all playing, right? <laughs> Doing my best trying to keep the wolves away. Yeah, so we're going to try to make uh, try to make Dayton next year. But enjoy yourself. Of course, you know, Dr. Scove, Dr. Tamitha Scove is going to be there tomorrow. And Friday, of course, She'll be at the uh, at the Antenna Forum, which you can watch live on iComAmerica.com. And, of course, W5KUB is there broadcasting live. And, and there's mm-hmm. just all kinds of cool stuff going on at Dayton. And uh, you guys have fun for me. I know you will. We will. And uh, uh, as I said, we have your picture up in the Ham Nation booth. So <laughs> everybody will know uh, what you look like. But next year you'll be here and we'll have a, a whole different uh, segment for that. Uh, 
Christian's got a couple of things going here. You've got some new hams you're going to be talking to tomorrow. I'm going to follow two hams. Well, one is studying for his mm-hmm. license. His name is Thomas and Ryan. They're coming down from Bloomington High School South. There's a radio club in the high school. Mm-hmm. They're going to come and attend tomorrow. Cool. And they'll be there for your talk. What are you going to talk about tomorrow at 11? I know it's at 11, but... What well, are you doing with this whole contest thing? Well, we're going to talk about audio. And we're not just talking about microphones. We're talking about audio, period. A, a lot of amateurs don't really understand the, the value in what happens in the receiving side. And we just accept with what the manufacturers give us. And that's not enough. Uh, when you're getting serious about this hobby, you want to go in and dig things out. And, and we teach about the Fletcher Munson curve of our ear and, and, and how our ears work. And, and you, don't, you don't hear about that. Nobody wants to talk about that. But we do. And uh, uh, we teach a lot about audio. And that, that's what it's all about. Are there little things that people can do when they're contesting, like take the bass out? Or exactly. When you're trying to cut through things. Absolutely. But you don't have equalization on receivers. Oh, you have a little bass and treble. That's not enough. And also you have very highly distorted amplifiers in all these transceivers. You can go around all that and it really makes a lot of difference. So we, we talk about that. And of course we talk about antennas and all other kind of things. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good time to see what's going on and how to make our stations better. That's what I try to do. So I'm, I'm going to catch some stuff with the boys, follow them around tomorrow, and record some of what you were just talking about and give it back to Great. the people. That's what we want to do. That will work. We'll be looking forward to that. You in, uh, you in the university tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I'll be there. You'll be there? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we have uh, a lot of people we want to talk to here. And I think the first thing we want to do is bring on, hopefully we can get them all behind us, is Tim Duffy and... Terry, let's see if we can get them in here. Uh, this is a very, <laughs> there we go, cool. <laughs> Don't you like live TV? What the heck? Hi, everybody, and uh, good to see you uh, here, Terry, because we've been talking about you here on the show for a couple of weeks, so we can all now say congratulations. This is really great that Thank you're, you. you're able to do this. And you, I know you had a lot of help with uh, with uh, Tim and the guys, but you did it yourself, and you did it really quick, didn't you? I did. Five weeks. Five weeks. Oh, my. Five weeks. Uh, well. Did you study at work? Tell us the truth. Actually, <laughs> probably the last couple of days on my break, because I took some practice tests. But no, I did all my studying at home. Oh, well, we're so happy that you made this happen because uh, you work for one of the greatest uh, organizations in ham radio these days, and that's DX Engineering. And uh, Tim, how much uh, help did you give her? Well, you know, uh, when, when Terry did her general, I gave her quite a bit of help, but when she put her mind to uh, studying for the extra, it was all Terry all the time. And uh, she really buckled down, made some sacrifices, <laughs> and worked great. hard. And uh, as part of uh, what all the folks at DX Engineering do, there's uh, active hams, uh, upgrading, and running VE sessions. We're, we've, we're, we have a very special team, and we're very proud. That's great. Well, we're uh, we're pr- very proud of DX Engineering coming into the amateur radio market and really kind of changing the way uh, uh, the people buy their their gear today and all the help that, that you guys and gals give. So, uh, Terry, what was your first contact? Uh, I think you did it on some kind of little station out there somewhere in the east, right? Yeah, I don't remember because that was during <laughs> W1AW. I don't remember what my first contact was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. What, what's it like? like to sit down at K3LR and work with some of your first contacts. What's that feeling? It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah, well. That's all that, I know. So it's to me, it's not anything or, amazing. Well, you know, and it She's takes, totally uh, spoiled. Yeah, totally spoiled. Oh, spoiled. You know, she, uh, she's starting to brush up on learning Japanese and a little bit of <laughs> Russian. And um, so she's having a good time working some DX. And, and also uh, she's got some QSL cards that have come in now. So there's uh, a lot of great things that happen when you, you go through the process of taking the test and passing and, oh. and then getting on the radio. And that's, that's what it's great. all about. Now, well, can I ask, do you, have, do you have your eyes set on a, um, a two by one or a one by two call sign yet? I'm not changing mine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not changing mine. It's special to me, so I'm not changing it. 
Now, I, I have a question here, here at the last, and I want you to uh, forget that, that Tim's sitting here. Um, do you have a radio at your desk? No. You should. Really? Not Tim. yet. I think. <laughs> take order. No, you can't. I think uh, the chat room should help us on this. Don't you think she should have a radio at her desk? And what should it be? Like, I don't think it should be like a, you know, a, a little two meter radio and stuff like that. I think it should be a, what, 7800? 7800? 7800? Maybe something Ray's going to be showing us later. Yeah. In the <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're going to go, go big. Right? Go big. Yes. Yeah. Go big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Well, thanks very much for being with us and, and hosting this great event. And thanks for letting us come in here and uh, make it happen. We really appreciate that. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be looking forward to working you on the air, Terry. So, all right. Uh, I'm looking forward to working all of you guys, too. Okay. And, and Bob, we're, we're very excited about the live stream tomorrow here from Contest University. So uh, anybody that wants to get in on the fun but isn't here in Dayton can go to the contestuniversity.com website and click on the live stream starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, Eastern Time, that's Eastern Daylight Time, and they can see uh, nine hours of Contest University live stream thanks to our friends at ICOM. That's right. All right. We appreciate that tonight. They brought their guy in and he hooked all this up. So uh, we wouldn't be here probably uh, with this quality of uh, picture and so on without ICOM helping us with their own IT guys. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll be looking forward to catching you on the air soon. That sounds great. great thanks. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks, That's great. That's great. Hey, Bob, where's Gordo? Gordo is stuck in <laughs> Dallas. Can you believe that? No. Yes, I can. I've been can? stuck in Dallas yeah. many times. <laughs> uh, it's been a, a real rugged time for me yeah. in the past. I got stuck three times. I didn't get stuck, but I couldn't go anywhere because of that. So. You were there with weather, though, right? Yeah, yeah. three times. Oh, it's he's really not stuck in weather? Is he? Oh, no. It, oh. I think it's a mechanical. I don't, I'm not quite oh. sure. But anyway, he, uh, everybody in Dallas, you might want to go out to the airport to make sure he doesn't have to sleep there. Where's Gordo? <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, well, that's the way it goes when you travel. George, uh, you have uh, something uh, you want to talk about, one of our sponsors? Or what, what do we got cooking back there? Well, actually, I think we're going to talk a little bit about DX Engineering. And to do that, he does such a lovely job of it. I think we're going to bring in Don. Oh, thanks, George. Man, I can tell with all the video and stuff coming from Hamvention that I'm not going to get anything done the next couple of days. And, of course, <laughs> DX Engineering is going to be a big part of that. And Hamvention, of course, is there and here. And DX Engineering is there as well. And the DX Engineering staff members are getting ready to unveil some of the latest product innovations. We're going to hear from some of that tonight. Make sure you visit the official DX Engineering booth that's in the main arena to see the latest. You can also find DX Engineering team members all over Dayton all weekend long. Hi, I'm Bob Nauman, W5OV, and I'm the sales manager at DX Engineering, and we're getting prepared to go to Dayton Hamvention 2015. This is our new uh, display for ACOM amplifiers. Uh, we just announced that ACOM is our latest product line. Uh, we have all five models of the ACOM amplifiers. We have the original 2000A, the 1500, the 1000, the 1010, and the new solid state 600S. Um, these are, will, are all on display at the Hamvention. Um, and we have a, a new uh, capability uh, of being able to peer inside each one of these amplifiers and see uh, how they're made uh, through our computer system. And uh, this system allows us to uh, look inside each one of the amplifiers and, and view the high quality construction, the type of components that are used, and the um, overall build quality that uh, is uh, without peer in the industry. Um, in addition to uh, ACOM being a new product line, we've added Kenwood uh, radios this year, Alinko, and uh, some others, and we'll have information on all of those at the uh, Hamvention. Um, if you can't attend the Hamvention, uh, all this information, including the 360 views, is available on our webpage right now. So uh, if you can't make it to Hamvention, please visit dxengineering.com and see all of our products right there. The schedule is posted under Tech, Info, and News. You'll find that at dxengineering.com. It'll tell you exactly 
what's going on at Hamvention that DX Engineering is involved with. And of course, all of the DX, well, most of the DF, DX Engineering staff will be there at the Contest Super Suite every night. They'll also be at Contest University. And if you're doing four days in May, they'll be there too. Going to be a small army of DX Engineering staff members uh, there at the show. So if you see someone wearing a DX Engineering credentials, they would love to talk about you and your station and give you some help with that. And of course, the DX Engineering booth is there in the big main arena at Hera as usual. Some of the uh, exciting new gear for 2015, you got to check it out. And even though most of the DX Engineering team is there in Dayton, it doesn't mean that business stops. The order lines are still open. You can order at dxengineering.com and via the phone. The, the technical staff is is there at, as well. So if you need tech support, you should probably wait until next week to call. But if you want to order something, man, you are in like Flynn. More breaking news. The new DX Engineering Spring Summer 2015 catalog is hot off the presses. So uh, it should be coming your way very soon, probably next week. It's the biggest DX Engineering catalog ever, and it is jam-packed with new products. The cover has the official DX Engineering Field Day Station. A lot of field day activities for the club inside, too. So if you don't get one, visit dxengineering.com and request one. And of course, if you're going to go to Hamvention, make sure you stop by the DX Engineering booth. The tech advisors can help you solve any issues with your station. A DX Engineering ships faster, as you know, than anybody else in the industry. So if you order uh, by 10 o'clock Eastern tonight and it's in stock, it'll be on the track headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, and no Formosan termites like you may see flying around here. It's termite season here in South Mississippi. Anyway, DX Engineering will help you shrink the globe. No termites, promise. Request your catalog or shop online 24-7, dxengineering.com slash hamnation. DX Engineering, thanks for your support of Ham Nation. Now let's get back to the fun at Dayton with Bob and crew. And crew, that's correct. <laughs> yes, Valerie, and we have Steve with us. Now, a lot of you uh, that work the nets after the show, you probably work 20 meters, and you hear this big signal out of the west. It's Steve, W7UDI. Thanks Hi. for coming. Thanks for being Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me here. And right. Thanks for everyone for checking in on the uh, yeah. after show nets. I really appreciate it. And, and do me a favor tonight, everyone. Get on 20 meters and give Bill, K5LN, a big uh, send-off. He's taking care of the 20-meter uh, after show net for me tonight. So I'd really appreciate it if everyone came out and uh, gave him a uh, a good showing on the uh, 20 meter after show net. And hey, don't forget the 40 meter net on 7278 and Cheryl on 3847, the D Star on the on uh, Reflector 14 Charlie, and uh, the Echo Link on uh, Do Drop In 35800. Three, three, <laughs> so. Is that right? Hey, George, is that right? <laughs> uh, yes, it's on 14283 uh, because I'm listening yep. to him right now. All right. There you go. <laughs> Well, we're so happy to have you and all of your help that you do here for us. You helped so much last year setting up because we do a forum here Saturday morning and we'll have probably a couple hundred people in it. And I appreciate you helping setting all it up because it's a real job to get all this. Oh, stuff it's together. my pleasure, Bob. I enjoy and I'm it. Glad to do that. Now, you, ha you have uh, something real special coming up here with the uh, yep, we, Nation, right? We have the uh, 200 uh, bicentennial uh, um uh, 200th episode uh, special event station. So uh, stay tuned on uh, on Friday, uh, May 15th. Uh, go to the QRZ pages of uh, W1H or W0H, W5H, W9H, W6H, or W7H for the uh, for the full announcements of the 200th uh, bicentennial uh, special event. We're going to start that on Wednesday night. Uh, the 27th and it'll be it's starting on the page will refer to Zulu time so everything is in reference to Zulu time so on the 27th of Wednesday we'll start the we won't be doing our normal check-ins we're going to start the special events uh, 200th episode for one full week from Wednesday to Wednesday and then at midnight uh, we all uh, will stop so uh, we're going to for all you technicians out there just a couple weeks ago Randy did a uh, dipole um uh, segment on smoke and solder. So go out there and make your 10 meter dipoles because we're going to make a concentrated effort on the weekends. All all six of us uh, net controls, we're going to concentrate on 10 meters to work all you technician class uh, uh, for uh, so you can get this, uh, this the certificate. You have to work four of the six uh, 
uh, net controls to uh, qualify for our special uh, the certificate. All the information will be on the uh, QRZ web pages. Well, you guys have done a lot of work putting this together, uh, each one of you. So we really appreciate it, and it's a lot of fun. It's 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 part of ham radio of being uh, able uh, to work these special. It, it's for me personally. Every Wednesday evening, I I look forward to it. Just getting out and talking with everybody. I've been told I get a little breathy, but that's okay. <laughs> But uh, we, we on the 20 meter net, like to, it's a family. We just want to find out how you're doing, what's going on, and just come out and enjoy. Even if you want to check your station and say, hey, you know, I'm just, I tried something different, uh, let's check it out. That's what it's so all about. That's what it's all about. Well, thanks for being here, and oh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all weekend over at the good old ham venture. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right, everyone. See you then. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, we have uh, we have another special guest that uh, Valerie is uh, going to uh, to interview. We're really excited to have Sandy. So I tell you what I'm going to do here. Uh, let me move out, and you can move right here. Okay. All right. It's all it's all yours. Oh no. It's all yours. Okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, we have Sandy, uh, uh, Delta Lima One, Quebec, Quebec. Uh, she's from Germany. Um, she competed in the WRTC uh, this last summer. And what uh, position did you place in? Uh, okay, there we go. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Val, yeah, for having thanks, me welcome here. welcome aboard. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. It's always fun to come to Dayton and uh, take part at Con Contest University. Uh, it's yeah. always fun. Are you uh, a professor this year? No, I'm not okay. a professor. I'm now you're going to be student. giving a presentation this year? Well, we will talk in the uh, contest forum about WRTC 2018. Okay. But that's not with the contest university, so. All right. There we go. And in better? WRTC, what was that like to compete at WRTC this year in Boston? Um, it was awesome. It was a great experience. It was the top experience in my contest life so far. And um, we ended up 21st out of 59 teams. And my teammate Irina and I, as the first ever qualified YL team, we are really proud of how it turned out. <laughs> That's wonderful. I mean, you did really well. And uh, uh, tell people what you do uh, when you're not a ham radio operator. What well, do you do I do lots living? of things, but for living, <laughs> I work as a police officer in a small town in the northern part of Germany, and I'm a criminal investigator into fraud investigation. And how did you get into this hobby? Because um, your your parents weren't hams, or you? How, what what got you inspired into ham radio? I mean. A lot of YLs don't, yeah. don't normally get into this. That's right. Um, actually, I got interested um, through my history teacher. We had a radio uh, station at our high school. I didn't know up to seventh grade that there was a station like this. And then in seventh grade, uh, my history teacher took the whole class into the radio room. And there were so many QSL cards at the wall. And then he had a QSO to China. And I was so impressed by that. And I said... I want to do that. Very and good. since then, I'm hooked. It's great. <laughs> so how many years have you been licensed? I was licensed in July 91. Okay, very, very <laughs> good. Well, congratulations on uh, WRTC. And uh, Germany's hosting WRTC in four years, correct? Well, in 2018, the next uh, WRTC will take place in Germany. And I'm really proud and happy about that. And I hope that uh, lots of people will visit us, that lots of um, hams try to qualify. So the qualifying process is already um, taking place. So we would like to have you there in Germany 2018. It's going to be fun. Well, thanks so much for joining us here. And uh, you, are you going to be presenting in a forum or something? I know you were working on a PowerPoint on the way here. Oh, yeah. At the contest forum, we will uh, talk about WRTC 2018. Very good. All right. So if you want to check her out, when is that going to be this weekend? Yeah, it's on Saturday. Saturday. All right. Very good. Thanks, Sandy. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here. All right. And I'm going to send it back to George. What you've got, what have you got going on out there? Well, I've just been watching the show here. Um, I've, I've got, uh, well, something coming up that'll be Saturday here 
are there at Hamvention. I'm not there yet. I won't be there till tomorrow. But uh, Saturday morning, we'll be doing the Hamvention, uh, Ham Nation Forum from the big room there at uh, Dayton Hamvention in the Harrow Arena. It's going to be, I believe, at, um, oh, gee, I hope Bob knows what time it is. I think it's around 1030. I'm off a little bit, though. It might be 1045. Uh, should have had it in front of me. Uh, I wasn't expecting you to ask me, though. But uh, uh, anyway, Saturday, Saturday morning, Saturday morning. it'll be uh, there in the big room. Uh, so join us for that. I know it runs till 1230, though. And then we'll be doing, or I won't be doing it because I'll be doing something else. But at 2 o'clock, we'll be doing our Bob and uh, Gordo and Val and, and I guess Christian, too. We'll be doing a live cut in there on the uh, Tech Guy show with Leo. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then Tommy and I, from uh, 2 to 4, and this is, these are all Eastern times, uh, Tommy and I will be doing Amateur Logic live from the ICOM booth there at Hamvention. Of course, ICOM's going to be carrying a lot of other live events as well throughout Hamvention. If you want to watch some of those, go to www.icomamerica.com slash Dayton 2015. And right now, I guess, really, we ought to uh, get Don in here and see what's been going on in the news. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,964, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, May 13th, 2015. Ham Radio continues to provide service to the people of Nepal in the wake of the devastating earthquake that hit back on April 25th. So far, more than 7,500 people are reported dead with at least 14,500 injured and tens of thousands left homeless. The pace of emergency communications has not slowed on most of the international links which have functioned since the first hours of the disaster. Two amateur radio stations appear to have started operating from some of the hard to reach rural areas of Nepal also, a repeater donated by the group CAN-USA that had been held by Nepalese Customs is now reported by 9N1SP as released and ready for deployment. It will complement the current 9N1KS 70 centimeter to 2 meter crossband repeater set up in 2012. Many radio amateurs from other countries remain active in the area as the post earthquake communications needs have not significantly diminished. Nepal has very few licensed amateur radio operators, which is why hams from other countries have traveled to it to provide their help. That's Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF. Nepal emergency traffic may be heard on any frequency in the amateur bands. If you hear emergency communications, please stand by or move to a different frequency. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has announced that Whistler is recalling some of its jump-and-go portable jump start and power supply units due to a potential fire hazard from overheating. Here's Shred Voby, W8HDU. The recall involves more than 10,000 of the pocket-sized devices manufactured in China. The notice says that the unit's lithium battery has the potential to overheat, causing it to melt and ignite nearby items, posing a fire hazard to consumers. The recall involves 12-volt jump-and-go units with a model number starting with WJS-3000. According to the ARRL, some Aries and Racy's participants use these units as portable 12-volt DC sources. More information on both the device and the action to take if you own one is at the link you'll find in this week's Amateur Radio Newsline report. The Midwest has been hammered this month with tornadoes. Chicago radio station WBBM recently reported on the role played by radio amateurs in helping the National Weather Service during severe weather. Bill Nelson, observation program leader for the National Weather Service office in Romeoville, Illinois, said that when severe weather hits, ham radio operators are our eyes on the ground, and they can reach out to other hams and tell us what's actually going on out in the real world. Nelson went on to note that when severe weather is in the area, at least one amateur radio operator sets up in the National Weather Service Operations Room right next to the coordinator and communicates with ham operators in the field. It completes the picture of what we do 
and C on the radar and gives us ground truth. You can listen to the WBBM report at the link you'll find in this week's Amateur Radio Newsline. Speaking of tornadoes, a simulation technology developed by a ham radio operator and other researchers has brought science a step closer to understanding twisters and how to better prepare for them. Professor Lee Orff, KG4ULP, and other researchers at Central Michigan University have been working on the project for almost a decade. The modeling program uses equations and data gathered from studying storms. Running on a supercomputer, it then creates the right conditions for a big tornado to form. According to Professor Orff, what he and his associates have done is to use a modeling program that takes the laws of physics and turns them into something a computer can solve. In doing so, it's helping to make it easier to understand what makes these severe weather events happen. And finally this week, a reminder that the nominating period for the 2015 Young Hem of the Year Award will close soon. Nominees must have used amateur radio in some way that's benefited the community or encouraged technological development directly or indirectly related to communications. Nominees must be 19 years of age or younger, reside in the United States, including Hawaii, Alaska, and Puerto Rico, or any of the Canadian provinces, and hold a currently valid U.S. or Canadian amateur radio license. The deadline for submitting an application is May 30th. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to 2015 Young Hem of the Year Award in care of Amateur Radio Newsline, 28197 Robin Avenue, Santa Clarita, California, 91350. You can also download a form at www.arnewsline.org slash YHOTY. Presentation of the 2015 Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award will take place the weekend of August 15th and 16th at the Huntsville Ham Fest in Huntsville, Alabama. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, and Fred Volby, W8HDU, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Well, thank you for that, Don. And while um, you were doing that, I looked up the exact times of the Ham Nation Forum that's going to be at uh, Hamvention on Saturday. That'll be Saturday morning from 10.30 a.m. until 12.15 p.m. So uh, join us if you're at Hamvention for that. And right now, let's just get on into smoking solder. You know, uh, Randy has been working on that 10-meter um, dipole. Well, he didn't get around to tuning it this week, so I came up with something here, uh, a little extra for us. Since we were kind of in the uh, Dayton spirit already, I thought we'd take a look at something else at Dayton that you might want to check out as long as you're there. As as it, hey! At the outbreak of World War II, Axis powers dominated international shortwave radio transmissions. Correcting this deficiency soon became an urgent strategic priority articulated by FDR himself. Robert Sherwood and the Foreign Information Service directed that the first official American broadcast be made in 1941. This initiative ultimately became the Voice of America. RCA, GE, and Westinghouse were called together in Washington to discuss how to respond to this circumstance. Someone mentioned that Crosley Radio had the real smarts both with superpower and shortwave and they were invited to the meetings. Crosley President James Shouse called Chief Engineer R.J. Rockwell and asked him if he could build a 200 kilowatt shortwave transmitter. Rockwell's response, I don't know, but I'll sure give it a hell of a try. Crossley Radio, being a smaller, more focused company, was the only one that could meet the challenge without hurting wartime efficiency in other areas. In 24 months, working through war shortages and the few impossibilities involved, Crossley engineers transformed 640 acres of Midwest farmland into the most powerful international shortwave transmitting facility in the world. The technical problems were horrendous. New tubes had to be designed, high-gain rhombic antennas improved, and re-entrant termination advanced to keep antennas from simply melting. It was a time of invention and adventure in the field of radio engineering. The Bethany station originally required 3.5 million watts of electricity to operate. When it became operational, the VOA had the highest priority for electrical service. Cincinnati might be blacked out, but the VOA would still receive electricity. Birds landing on these radio frequency transmission lines had a tendency to explode and simply vanish into very small pieces. The Bethany team designed and built history's only high-efficiency rhombic antenna system. 
It was the most efficient operation in the VOA system and the most sophisticated antenna system ever devised. This system generated a sharp beam with an effective radiated power toward the target area of nearly 10 million watts. From 1942 to 1944, international shortwave broadcast took place from the studios and transmitters of WLW in Cincinnati. Tell the truth and let the world decide. Hitler called them the Cincinnati Liars. For 50 plus years, the Bethany Station broadcast the truth and brought hope to millions trapped in totalitarian regimes, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and in 52 languages at its peak. Well, I'm talking with Dave Snyder here, uh, a former employee of the Voice of America. Dave, you spent many years here, didn't you? Fourteen years. Fourteen years. And where are we standing right now? What What is this called? We're in the antenna switching matrix. Any one of our six broadcast transmitters could be connected to any of the 22 antennas via the switching matrix. So it's a gigantic telephone switchboard of 300 ohm balance transmission line, 216 cross points out here for balance transmission line. So how did you get the power out here from the transmitters out to the uh, switching network? From the transmitters themselves, they ran through ducted line inside the building, made a transition to open wire. So 300 ohm balance line feeders out to the switching structure. I see you've got some pictures here of what appear to be German radios. What's the story on that? Well, the Volkskampfanger is a very important piece of our story. So in 1931, Hitler's Minister of Communications, Goebbels, decided that this tool of radio was going to be very important to the Third Reich. If you got the people's ears, you got the people's minds. And the old theory that if you told a lie enough times, eventually somebody's going to believe you. So they decided to make a subsidized radio receiver called the People's Receiver. And the People's Receiver could be distributed to the German public for about a third to a fourth of the cost of an average radio receiver. So 1931, they made the first People's Receiver. And this is the 1931 model. This is more of a mid-30s model, and this is the last model, the 1939 model. It only had long wave and medium wave. It did not have a short wave band, and it only had three tubes. It was not a sensitive receiver. It was made for listening to local stations. And, of course, Hitler, by World War II, by Pearl Harbor Day, had 68 radio transmitters on his network under his control, and if you go back to the people's receiver, by 1938, every other German household had the people's receiver. There were 8 million of them in Germany. And by 1943, there were 15 million people's receivers across Europe. We're standing in the 1965, the modernization control room. So we call this our NASA-looking control room. Across the front, we have our audio switching control. So the whole audio matrix switch was controlled by that board there, um, the old preset and master take. So if you had 10 changes to do on the hour, you could set up all the, preset, the, the switching on the presets and just push one button and 10 things would happen. Actually, it had 12 audio inputs plus a t test tone could go to each one of the six broadcast transmitters and the two independent sideband transmitters. So Bethany 1 through Bethany 6, and switching, selecting a source, and then selecting an on or an off switch. Mm -hmm. You see two major catenaries between each one of the tall towers. One side holds a reflector screen. So all that, all that happens off of this catenary is a reflector screen, and off of this catenary are all the dipoles. So each one of these antennas, four antennas between each of the big towers, they were two by four curtains, four dipoles high by two dipoles wide. So what we call a four by two curtain. There were curtain antennas much larger in the world, curtain antennas much smaller, but ours were four by two, which gives roughly 21, 22 dB gain. I'm taking it, this is Bethany number six transmitter? This is number six transmitter. This is just the front control panel of it. This is the diagnostic and metering panel. And basically, 
All of the nine servo amplifiers are in this cabinet, which run all the tuning. The driver amplifier is in here, and right directly behind the driver amplifier is the power amplifier. It consists of two tubes in parallel, four CV100 thousand C tetrodes, and those uh, are vapor cooled. So the anode of the tube sits in a water bucket. When the water reaches 100 degrees C, it can't get any hotter. It changes phase, changes to water vapor, i.e. steam. Goes up through the big 4-inch uh, copper tubing there up to a steam condenser. I've seen plenty of 4CX 15,000s, but I think this is the first 4CX 100,000 I've ever seen. Well, we actually have three examples of the same tube here. The one on the very left is a 4CX 35,000C, and that was used in many, many 50 kilowatt transmitters around the country. The one in the middle is the 4CV100,000, as originally supplied by IMAC, who was the builder. And then the tube on the right is a 4CV100,000C, which has been rebuilt by Econco. And you notice that the fins are completely different. Mm -hmm. They came up with a much wider fin, and there are slots in the fins, and actually horizontal slots in the fins, which all promote better boiling. So much better heat conduction from the anode out into the water to promote better boiling. Welcome to 30 Minutes of VOA Special English, a way to learn American English and much more. Years ago, VOA's emphasis was on English. And so for each one of the four English language networks, they did an hour of special English, plus a newscast in special English. Special English is read at one-third slower speed and only uses a 1,500-word vocabulary. And so I always wanted a special English dictionary. Well, I have one here. And this is those 1,500 words translated. We're well, not translated, but a definition. It's a dictionary. And so... Uh, if you leaf through here, uh, there's diagrams, pictures, and a, at least a full line of explanation of each one of the words in the dictionary. And if there was a word that you just couldn't understand at all, you would grab your dictionary, look it up, and you'd still get the meaning of that sentence as it was being read over the air. So many, many people learned English by listening to the Voice of America. And that's really uh, a trip you want to make if you got time while you're at Hamvention. Plan on going by the Voice of America Museum there. Really a, a great location, a lot of history there. And Dave Snyder certainly knew his stuff on it. If you can't make it, though, um, and you want to see the rest of that, go to AmateurLogic.tv. Check it out there or on the AmateurLogic YouTube group. Uh, you can find more about it there. But, you know, last week I asked a question. We were talking about SWR, and uh, we normally say SWR, but the term is really the SWR. And I asked, what does the V stand for? And we had a winner, and it's Mike Martin, WY0M, and he said V is for voltage. So congratulations, Mike. We're going to send you this MFJ dual 24-hour clock here. Put it in your ham shack so you know what the local time is as well as UTC both. So 7-3, next week we're not going to uh, have a contest since I'll be attending Dayton this week. But uh, we'll be back with another one the week following that. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back with uh, Bob and Val and Christian and more in a moment from Dayton. But first, let's get a message here from ICOM. The time is now. Dayton Hamvention 2015 is upon us. Join in the fun at Harrah Arena or tune in online as ICOM America is broadcasting various events before and during the event. Live at Dayton with ICOM America. This year's Hamvention takes place from May 15th through 17th in Dayton, Ohio. Can't make it? ICOM has you covered. ICOM is offering live broadcasts of select events. This is an exciting free service the company has provided in the last few years. Go to icomamerica.com slash Dayton2015 for video and streaming schedule. ICOM will be live at Dayton starting Thursday, May 14th, one day before Hamvention officially opens. Live streams will continue through Saturday, May 16th. 
check out a speaker list and video schedule on ICOM's website. Broadcast events include the day-long contesting workshop, morning D-Star lecture, antenna forum, youth forum, and a very special event at ICOM's booth on Saturday afternoon. You won't want to miss it. Visit icomamerica.com slash Dayton2015 for all things Dayton. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's complete line of amateur radio products. Those Hamvention live stream specials that ICOM is going to have is going to be Tommy and I from Amateur Logic. We'll be broadcasting there live Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you're at Hamvention, come by and, uh, and wave at us. Or, or throw uh, spitballs or whatever you want to do. <laughs> We're going to have a good time there. If you can't come, though, tune in and watch it, icomamerica.com slash Dayton2015. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash Ham Nation and register to win some great prizes from the Icom Swag Store, like T-shirts and hats. And you can learn about the monthly grand prize while you're there for a new radio. And for May, it's going to be the ID5100A, a dual-band, dual-watch mobile with touchscreen, D-Star, GPS receiver, repeater lift-up function, and a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this and each episode and register to win. And let's go back to Dayton now and uh, see what all the excitement's going on. Oh, we've got some excitement here. I'm joined with uh, uh, Ray. I'm sure all the Ham, uh, Ham Nation viewers know Ray from ICOM. Ray, good to have you here. Good to be here, Bob. And I know you've got a really important thing going to happen here in a minute. But Paul came up a while ago, K9PG, and he said, there's somebody here you need to talk to. And come to find out, this fellow is a ham, and he's riding a bicycle around the globe. And so I found out he stayed with Valerie and Jerry last night. So talk about right. this wonderful guy. Well, here. his name is Tom. He's from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. His call sign is Oscar Zulu 1 Alpha Alpha, and he is cycling around the world. Uh, so about, why don't you tell the viewers about what that's all about? What, what have you been doing and where have you been cycling? It's a long cycling trip. It's been four years years on the road now and um, it's been a great adventure I started back home in my in my hometown Copenhagen in Denmark and um, I made it across Europe I was in the Middle East I was even in Syria before all this uh, sad troubles began there I was in Asia I was in Australia New Zealand then I flew across the Pacific to uh, to South America and I crossed South America. Now I'm going north um, now towards Canada. Now you started Canada. South America. You started at the very bottom of South very America and all the way to the top. Yeah, that's I a, I want to go that's up a there pretty to large... Newfoundland in Canada. Yeah. So how many miles have you cycled so, so far? Just over 20,000 miles on the bike, yeah. And uh, when are you due to cycle through the U.S.? Well, actually, my bicycle right now is down in uh, Costa Rica. And uh, so I cheated a little, little bit and took a flight up here to Dayton. And I will take another flight back and continue with the, with the bike. And I want, to, I want to be in Canada when it's still quite uh, warm when it's summer. So that means uh, by the end of September, I think it's a good idea to be up in Canada. So I'll try for that. So you're going to start here like July, something like that? I will like be that. in the States in July, August, yeah, and September and in you're Canada. you're starting in Texas? Or are you going to hit um, all 50 states? I, uh, no, it will not be all 50 states. I think actually what I think I want to do is to go to uh, Cancun in Mexico and take the ferry over to Cuba and somehow from Cuba make it to Florida. I want to start down in Florida, go up the East Coast. Uh, now, on, on your travels, have you been meeting with, you've been taking a two-meter radio with you, I that's have, correct? And uh, you've been uh, meeting a lot of the ham, uh, other ham radio operators and ham clubs around the world? Absolutely. In almost every country I've, I've met the other hams. There's just a few countries where I, where I miss the, 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 the uh, meeting the hams. But it has, and it's been just amazing to meet these people all over the world. It's like being part of a big family. I think you could do a trip like this without being a ham, but it just adds this very special dimension because you get to meet uh, their 
the great local local people and they have helped a lot around and I have my small two meter radio I can keep in contact um, uh, and that as well on the local repeater so it's a, it's a great addition to the trip. Uh, now I understand in some parts uh, you've actually had to have police escorts because the areas weren't quite that safe is that correct? There is a couple of dangerous areas uh, in general I, I've been very lucky I didn't have any big problems for, for four years on the bicycle but um, in Peru in the in some very isolated parts of the deserts in Peru I uh, I was riding there and the, the police were also on the road and they said uh, we better follow you uh, for, for like a, a day here <laughs> because the uh, uh, actually it's an area, area that's known that they, they like to rob the cyclists uh, and um, I was okay with the police they were riding like uh, driving beside me the whole day and they were friendly guys we had a good chat um, then later that day um, I met another guy cycling south he was actually from, from Finland and um, we talked a bit about the security situation and I said it's not so not so safe here and um, and he continued further down south and we kept in contact and he told me that actually that very night he he put up his tent like by the roadside and he couldn't get very far away from the road because it was like a desert um, and uh, he actually got like at four o'clock in the morning like five people came with guns and they rubbed everything everything he had I was like, oh, oh that's, wow, that's, that's a shame about. Uh, it was the same day where I, where I met him, actually, but luckily nothing happened to me. So it far, knock on wood. Now, how many miles do you have to go? Do you, do you have it all mapped out? Uh, it's about 50,000 kilometers, so 30,000 miles. Yes. Very uh, good. So you're almost halfway. Yeah, I'm getting there. Well, uh, lots of success great. and uh, congratulations. <laughs> and if you see uh, and you know he's coming to your area, he'll be on his two-meter radio uh, hooking up with local repeaters. Absolutely. And uh, maybe you can work him and uh, invite him out and... Uh, have a drink or a meal together. Thanks. <laughs> All right. All thanks, right. Tom. Thomas, well, thanks a lot. Did you have a question for him? Yeah, right? I do have a question. With uh, In the United States, there's a lot of road construction, so you'll probably run into some of that. But where has been your most challenging uh, roadways to ride on? Um, there has been a couple of challenges. One of that was in Australia. There is not a lot in the central of Australia in the outback. So there is like mm -hmm. 3,000 kilometers of nothingness. Uh, you go like... You have to bring a lot of water and food, so that was a challenge. I also had like a headwind the whole way. Mm -hmm. Then there is um, the mountains in South America. That is pretty, um, uh, some pretty, uh, pretty difficult riding down there, up to 4,000 meters of, uh, of altitude in the mountains. So there's not a lot of oxygen up there and uh, a lot of wind as well. Uh, and the heat is also sometimes a problem. Down there in Central America where I am now, it's, uh, it's pretty hot. But I, I, I like the challenges. That's what makes it interesting. Yeah. Well, we're so happy that Paul brought you up here and introduced you to me. And I'm glad to have you on. Good luck to you and success. We'll try to catch up with you somewhere on the air. And uh, you have a real great time out there puddling around the globe. So thanks a lot, Thank Thomas. All Thank right. You. All right. Well, this has been really a, a wonderful time. Uh, we're going to... Uh, move Ray in here. Ray, you have a really nice uh, uh, thing to tell us about. I think it's kind of a historic thing, right, that just happened here a while ago, so well, it's we, all yours. Well, we got two things to talk about. One of them is I'm kind of having an identity crisis today because wearing the mad scientist jacket, I've also got my Contest University instructor's badge and shirt on, the ICOM shirt, all the different things that we're doing together, and George and Tommy are going to have a few of these lab coats on. But uh, going with the theme of the scientist in that, we've got a new development, uh, uh, the 7600. Uh, everybody's been asking, when's a new radio coming out? Well, the radio, the hardware is going to stay the same, but there's a new firmware update that's going to be out hopefully by the end of this month. Uh, the upgrades that we had on the higher-end radios with the waterfall display, the APF, the using a mouse to control for the screen, all of that's going to be in this firmware update. So unlike where you see some OSs being upgraded, uh, you have to upgrade your, your hardware as well to make that happen, not for 7,600 owners. Uh, that's the other cool, thing, right? Well, thank will you. the older radios be upgradable as well? Yes, sir, they will be. Uh, it'll just be download the firmware, and uh, less than five minutes we had the one here updated tonight. I got the firmware email to me this morning. I watched that happen. That was pretty cool. It didn't take long, did no, it? No, it didn't. 
I have to do that to my 76. That'll be wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is uh, we're in the final stages of signing another three-year agreement with the Boy Scouts of America. So we'll continue supporting them for their radio merit badge uh, radio kits, as well as for the 2017 uh, Jambo. We're going to be there with all kinds of gear. Uh, the hardware that's up there permanently right now, it's, it's all working we got to go there and double check to make sure everything is still tuned and working but well i, I want to tell you that we're really appreciative of icom sponsoring uh the show for all these years we appreciate you being here and uh, we look forward to seeing all the new things you have uh, at the show so thanks for being here Ray. well we're having a great time and thank you for allowing me to all slip right, in sure. here all right I think we pretty much have things wrapped up here. Uh, you you okay? You, yeah, you, yeah. Well, do you have anything new coming out? I know he had uh, some yeah, nice we, new Yeah, well, hardware. you know, uh, we know oh, all about yeah, this yeah, guy yeah. and gal, you know, pink and red and blue. Uh, the Pro 7 has is, is, uh, uh, really been uh, popular. We'll be uh, kicking it here. But we have a brand new product nobody's seen, and that is a handy talkie headset. I've been asked really? by for years, people, build us a good one because most of them out there they don't sound very good. And it's been a project that Sarah and Steve and Jerry back in our plant uh, got together with Donna and all of them put this together. It was kind of a surprise for me. The only thing I did was uh, check in to make sure the audio was just right and, and on the microphone and the speaker. But uh, it's a project of, of theirs. And this... This uh, product I'm using here, I've had it on the air for uh, about the past four or five shows. This is the first product we've done with 3D printers. Uh, we used a 3D printer to do the original mold once we got it right. And, of course, we went into the, the steel printing. But it was, it was really great. But it's a base and uh, the new PR10 microphones. There are all these new products. We'll have three of them here, and we're very, very excited about that. Uh, and uh, there again, just new things to keep us happening and sounding good, of course. Yeah, very good. Well, and are we we'll, going to get to see that tomorrow at, at uh, Contest we will. University? Yeah, we'll Perfect. get into that. All right. And, of course, uh, all of you, please watch the live feeds that uh, they were showing you all ago. The, uh, starting tomorrow morning, you'll see the live feed. Just go to ICOM's webpage, and you can see where that's all going to happen. But please join us Saturday, 2 o'clock. That's Dayton time, because we will be on the air with Leo Laporte. We're very honored to do this. They brought in a special uplink uh, from Exceed. They brought in an, uh, an uplink to do this so we get really good quality uh, back to California. So that's what we got going. And thanks for joining. Well, thanks with for me. having me here today. And thanks you, Christian, for being here. Thank you. We, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, we really appreciate what you're doing for the show. And the chat room, we'll be uh, watching what's going on there. And we want to switch over and see what Amanda's got going before we close everything out. And her and George can close the show. Amanda, how are you doing? So, actually, Amanda has uh, lightning nearby, and it knocked out her internet just now. Oh. So, oh. She, so she sends her apologies, but she can't make it tonight. Weather gets us. It got Gordon tonight, and it got Amanda. Well, it, the funny thing is I had Amanda for about two minutes on, and then she dropped, and she just uh, texted me saying that uh, she, there's lightning nearby, and her internet well, is gone. Okay. Well, greetings to everyone. Thank you for watching tonight, and maybe we'll see you here next year in Dayton, but come a day or two early so you can come to Contest University. Don't forget that. It's the best part of it. Happens downtown. There's nothing going on at Hera until Friday, but it all happens here a couple of days before. Thanks very much, Alex. Good to see you and have your talented fingers running the board and all of our guests. We'll, uh, I guess, see you next week right and here. we'll see you all at the booth this weekend. Got it. Can't wait to meet you all. Yeah. Bye-bye for now. From Dayton, K9EID and the whole Ham Nation crew.